Land Systems, and I'm here today with my partner Dave DeYoung from the Boeing Corporation to give a brief overview of a project we've been working on uh, collectively and with some other organizations that I'll mention in a moment to bring directed energy, specifically lasers, to the battlefield uh, in a very short time frame uh, to the U.S. Army, and particularly to the maneuver formations. And I'll talk about that in uh, more detail on subsequent slides. Our role is not on the laser side of the equation. We're a combat vehicle manufacturer, a systems integrator, vehicle designer. So our expertise is making things go together on a platform that is in the U.S. Army's combat brigades. And we rely on the companies like Boeing who have the expertise in their laser weapons and, and other aspects of the system. And I'll show you that more on subsequent slides. This is a couple of pictures here of, of what we're doing. We're collaborating with a number of Army commands from uh, Fort Sill, the Fire Center, Space Missile Defense Command here in Huntsville, uh, Amberdeck also here in Huntsville, and as well as the Maneuver Center down at Fort Benning on the Army side. And as I mentioned, we're collaborating with a number of industry partners as well, uh, primarily uh, Boeing Corporation on the phase one of our project. And the goal is to bring uh, this counter UAS, counter UAV capability to the Army's maneuver formations. If any of you attended the briefings earlier today uh, about the IFPIC system, its initial uh, place on the battlefield is going to be to protect fixed and semi-fixed high, uh, high value assets. And right now the Army's maneuver formations lack short range air defense capability because of the redesign that the Army went through in the early 2000s. So we're trying to work to figure out a way to bring that capability back to the maneuver formations inside the United States Army. We started this a few years ago uh, on uh, IRAD funds and we're continuing that today. And we're in the phase one of a two year or what we're calling a two or multi-year uh, project, two phase project. And we are leveraging the work that's being done by Space Missile Defense Command on their high energy laser project, which is advancing the state of the art of the technology for everything from lasers to fire control. And so we're gonna benefit from their work uh, in, in that program. Phase one of the project is to put together a, uh, a system on a striker vehicle, which is the mainstay of the Army Striker Brigade combat teams and is present in the other two uh, brigade combat teams as well, using Boeing's compact laser weapon system, which is a two kilowatt system that they developed for another Department of Defense user, and put that on a vehicle for the maneuver fire integration exercise next month out at Fort Sill so that the Army can experiment with the tactics, techniques, procedures, command and control, and battlefield effects of a system like this in preparation for going to a higher power, more capable system. But even at this power, uh, power level, what we have found is that it does have real, uh, if somewhat limited, uh, capabilities on the battlefield. And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. We hope the system is successful next month, and I'll mention what we have been able to accomplish so far. And then uh, we are hopeful that the fire center will nominate it for participation in a future Army warfighting assessment, either uh, 20, I doubt this year there's time for it, but maybe in 2017. While we initially started with phase two being a high power system, which is defined in the 30 kilowatt or greater power level uh, based on the research done here at SMDC, um, we think that is still possible and we're gonna pursue that path and I'll talk about that in a moment. But just in the last couple of months, we've been hearing from our Army uh, customers or clients that we're working with that they might be interested in a more intermediate level power level, something between what we're demonstrating in phase one and something, uh, uh, but not at the power that is capable uh, in phase two to provide the real operational effects that the Army is looking for. And I'll describe that in a moment as well. The scope of the project you can see here, uh, we did the systems uh, integration on the combat vehicle. Uh, PM Stryker provided us a Stryker vehicle on loan uh, at no cost, which is very appreciative of, of that from them. As I mentioned, uh, Boeing provided us with their laser system that was designed to be a man-portable system for another Department of Defense user. And we, we worked with the uh, Fort Sill folks at the fire center to make sure that everything could integrate into the network architecture they have on their test range and talk to the radars, talk to the fire control systems, talk to the range control systems out there so it could be operated safely. Until last Thursday, uh, Fort Sill had never fired a high power laser on their range. So that was one of their major goals was to make sure they could accomplish it safely. And uh, we were out there last Thursday and, it, and it, it, it worked and they didn't have any problems. So that was a major exercise goal for them that we had to help them accomplish. 
We received, uh, somebody asked me this earlier, we received the information on the vehicle from a number of other systems that are being tested at the maneuver fires uh, exercise as well. There's some modified Army uh, radars, if you're familiar with Sentinel or Q50, that have been modified to pick up these low, slow, small flying UAV targets that are so hard to find on the battlefield that we're finding uh, countries around the world are using with great effect. And we're also linked into the Army's new uh, a battle command system for air and missile defense that has the unfortunate acronym of MAFIA, stands for uh, Maneuver uh, Aviation Fires Integrated Architecture, or MAFIA for short. And you can kind of see there in the bottom right what our demonstrator vehicle looks like uh, out there on the range at Fort Sill. And here's a few pictures uh, taken in the last couple of weeks out there on the range. The uh, acronym that the Army gave the vehicle is the Stryker MEHEL, which stands for Mobile Expeditionary High Energy Laser. It's a uh, proof of principle platform. It does not yet have a high energy laser on it, as I've already mentioned, uh, but that's what we're working with. And you'll see there on the, uh, on the lower left is a picture from just last, or excuse me, the lower right, just last week, as it was coming back from a successful engagement downrange. They flew five small UAV targets for us to uh, shoot at during the rehearsal for the exercise next month. We were able to engage four out of the five. There's one target we didn't pick up out there on the, uh, in the scatter on the range. Uh, of the four that we did engage, three were kills. We destroyed the UAV sufficiently that it, or enough on the UAV that it crashed. And one was a system defeat in that we uh, destroyed the control mechanism and it had a fail safe return to home program in it and so it flew back to its ground station. So it wasn't a, a hard kill, we, they called it a soft kill. And you can see a picture there on the top, that's the uh, small Phantom, it's a commercial quadcopter UAV that was being, uh, being used as a target. This just gives a, a kind of a fuzzy overview of what this system looks like. I just want to mention that what we did was an installation. We took the system as designed by Boeing for their other customer and we took the vehicle as provided to us by PM Stryker and didn't modify either one. We hooked them together, we installed things to make the power and the communications and the operator stations work. If we were to actually go to a full-scale integration, it would look a lot different than this because we could use some of the vehicle's onboard systems to do the things that some of those boxes you see in blue provide for the system in its uh, man-portable mode. Now, what do we think is going to happen next? Well, first off, in March, we, or excuse me, in April, we hope that at MIFIX we're successful in the actual uh, demonstration test that takes place the uh, second and third weeks of April. But following that, we see two potential uh, paths. One is to continue to work with uh, our customers on staying abreast with the state-of-the-art of laser technology and beam control technology and, and track that as it goes to the kind of power levels that the Army would ultimately like to see and a platform that can do counter UAV work as well as counter RAM or rocket artillery and mortar work. In parallel with that, but in a shorter time span, is this potential for a multi-mission platform. And what we are hearing, and I don't want to speak for any of the Army commands that we talk to, is that they're interested in bringing this capability to the formation without having to add another vehicle or soldiers to it because the Army doesn't have the force structure anymore for short-range air defense. So we're looking at how to put this laser capability, perhaps some electronic warfare capability, uh, maybe even the acquisition radar capability onto a recon vehicle operated by scouts. So they would be on the part of the battlefield that could provide this coverage to their parent unit, or maybe to put it on the field artillery observer's vehicle and give them an added capability or a second mission to make them a fires integrated platform combining air defense and artillery. So we're uh, anxiously uh, waiting for April to come around so we can do the test, get the kind of feedback that uh, the Army will get by having his folks out on the range, and then see what comes next. And that, in the interest of time, is a brief overview, and then I'm open to questions, and I hope if you have anything uh, of a technical nature on the laser side of the question, that's why Dave's up here to help me. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, so I have, a, I have a, uh, an initial question, if I can. Um, the the, uh, the the current power is two kilowatts, solid state laser, and um, do you 
see a lot of problem with being able to expand that to a higher powered laser in a solid state format with, uh, with the uh, solid state laser efficiency issues? So, is this working? No? Yeah, you just got to get close enough. So, the system we have on the striker can take up to a 10 kilowatt laser. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the system shown. Beyond that, we'll have yeah. other. I guess your mic isn't working, Dave. Are you doing So the system on the striker uh, that can take up to a 10 kilowatt laser, and, uh, and, and I think there's easily room within the striker to do that. Um, beyond that, uh, we have designs with uh, larger beam directors that can take uh, yet higher power lasers, and uh, we're comfortable up to approximately 50 kilowatts uh, within the striker. And then, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Just what. For, for, for those of us that are not as familiar, perhaps, with uh, some of the details of how a laser uh, effects might occur, what uh, kind of 2 kilowatts, 20 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, what, what type of effect would you be able to, to have with that type of system? Do you want to answer? Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so I think that brochure we're handing out uh, spells out part of that. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. Um, it, it doesn't double with, you know, if you double power, it doesn't double range. Don't don't let your head go there. But um, uh, I, I think what's in that brochure is uh, with 10 kilowatts up, uh, we can uh, take down UAVs out to about three kilometers, I believe is what we've published. Yeah. Okay. So and with uh, with two kilowatts out to about one kilometer. And I think what we're seeing out on the range also is that it has ground target uh, applicability right. as well. We've engaged a number of simulated ground control stations that would be controlling UAVs. Uh, it could easily be used to disable optics, uh, vehicles, you know, it can burn holes in metal. So there is a, a def very definitely a ground attack capability inherent in this, in, with this capability. And the higher the power goes, the longer the range you get and the shorter time you have to be on a target. We feel that that uh, multi-mission capability that we could probably do the integration at um, somewhere between 5 and 10 kilowatt levels of power on an existing platform. Beyond that level, we think it would probably take a dedicated platform to, uh, to provide the cooling and the battery power, the power generation uh, that you would need. Thank you. Terry Baker from Telefonics. Does the atmospheric absorption dissipate the beam enough so that it doesn't harm friendly aircraft or assets if you miss like you did in, in the test results so yeah so first off um, we didn't miss in the test results typically we don't fire the laser unless we've got solid track on it um, and and uh, the the laser weapon integrates with the uh, the command and control structure resident at the range. So we have a complete air picture and understand friendlies or, or others that are in the airspace so that a inadvertent illumination won't happen. And just to emphasize Dave's point, yeah, it, the system doesn't miss because you're traveling at the speed of light. If you have a lock on the target, when you engage, it's going to hit the target. Uh, it's not quite like a bullet where you, you're hopeful that the ballistics work out correctly. Yeah, right. right. You have solid track and positive visual ID of what you're pointing at, and you, you see it lays while you're doing it. Thank you. It's more exciting inside a vehicle than outside because there's no sound and there's no sight. When it fires, it fires, and you only know it by watching the effect on the target. Other questions? You're an integrator, so uh, that's a great uh, weapon. Uh, but in integrating these high power use things in vehicles, um, I know your company used to have a thrust, a technology thrust called power management. Right. And it's all about getting ready for whatever all these future uses are and how they're going to stack up, whatever. We tend to look at them in isolation. 
I'm wondering, are you, is there is there a wave coming where that we're ready for in the vehicle world mm -hmm. or not for how to manage, store, and deploy this power uh, sure, throughout the vehicle? Question. And I don't know if everybody heard that. I couldn't tell because I was right in front. The question was, are we? what are we doing on the vehicle power side and battery side to be ready for this kind of high demand system power to management? The vehicle today generates enough uh, usable power for a system of the size that we have on the vehicle out at Fort Sill. As the power levels increase, then it becomes more problematic. But on the vehicle side, fam the family of vehicle side, we have a range of capabilities for uh, power that range from 20 kilowatts to 120 kilowatts off of a striker size vehicle. And we're also experimenting with a lot of uh, different battery storage capabilities because the, the system fires off a battery power and the question becomes how big a bank of batteries and how fast do you need them to recharge in order to meet the required mission cycle of the weapon. So I think there's capability coming in the near future. Uh, one example is the uh, inline starter generator that we're working with Tardec on that uh, can produce 120 kilowatts of power through the drivetrain. We have other options to produce that much power off directly off the motor. So we think we can provide uh, the power. Cooling will be a challenge. That's a uh, intensive uh, swap bill uh, to, to cool the system. So that, in our view, is the bigger challenge, uh, even greater than power. Yeah, but after you fire, and if you fire multiple times, is there a big problem with how that power gets replenished? Yeah, yes, and it's a question of uh, how big is your battery bank in terms of the number of shots that can provide to the laser before it is drained, and then how quickly those batteries can absorb the power from a power source like an engine and, and recharge themselves. So I don't know, Dave, you want to add to that? Okay. Questions, others? All right. Gentlemen, All right. thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Appreciate your uh, 